and I want to talk to you guys about autoimmune disease. So most people have this concept that autoimmune disease just comes out of nowhere, slaps you in the face, and boom, you're toasted. You're doomed to have this autoimmune disease for the rest of your life. While there is a huge genetic predisposition, and that's why we do look at uh, genes for a lot of people, especially with celiac disease and rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, and we, and we looked at autoantibody markers, but there are some things that can be modified uh, pretty significantly through diet and lifestyle changes and looking at the root cause of what's worsening the autoimmune disease. And for some people, if we do the screening far, uh, for, um, further along in advance, what we can do is take a look at, hey, what are your risk factors that may be causing you to express these genes, because it's called the study of epigenetics, and how can we minimize that through dietary and lifestyle changes and stuff like that. And we can l quantify somebody's reaction towards different foods that can progress them towards autoimmune disease, and here's some examples. So, um, type 1 diabetes, you know, one of the most common autoimmune diseases in the world. It's associated with some antibodies against uh, casein molecules, which are milk proteins, and a few other food molecules as well. Um, you have um, Hashimoto's thyroid disease, which is the most common uh, cause of thyroid disease in the nation, that has propensity to you uh, be affected by gluten and FODMAPs containing foods. And uh, you have uh, rheumatoid arthritis, which have a very similar pattern as somebody uh, with lupus, which also modified by um, people eating certain types of food like the gluten and the FODMAPs and processed foods and stuff like that. But everybody's different. Everybody reacts to things different. And, you know, there needs to be a very scientific way of looking at what they're reacting to at the time and minimizing it. And so what I like to do is I actually like to run food intolerance panels on people and looking at their antibodies, not really just towards the traditional ways of looking at antibodies towards nuclear protein for lupus and rheumatoid factor and CCP antibodies for rheumatoid arthritis, but what we also should be looking at is antibodies towards certain foods that they're eating because these could be modified. The most modifiable thing in our lives is what we put into our mouths, right? Um, sometimes depending on where you are, you can't, mo you can't modify what air you're breathing in. You can't modify what pollution's in the air that's touching your skin. We can always modify what goes into our mouths. And so I think we, we, we maximize and optimize on that concept, we can actually uh, reduce the symptoms of autoimmune disease. And a lot of times, uh, scientifically, looking at people's blood work, we can see that their autoimmune antibodies the markers of autoimmune disease actually comes down as well. So the, our most common autoimmune population that we deal with is people with thyroid disease, whether it's Graves' disease or Hashimoto's disease. In Hashimoto's uh, hypothyroidism, um, we look at their presence, uh, whether um, they have a presence of either it's TPO antibodies or thyroid globulin antibodies, and we track these over time on a dietary regimen. And we know by looking at people's dietary uh, food intolerances, looking at people's inflammatory markers, looking at people's autoimmune markers, that over time these people with Hashimoto's disease can get their TPO antibodies to come down and thyroglobulin antibodies to come down. And that's how we know um, that they're doing well. And better yet, they, you know, people generally feel better. So I think optimizing on hormones, optimizing on, uh, on uh, reducing inflammation, and looking at these markers um, at a very sensitive level, looking and trending them over time is going to be really important that looking at autoimmune disease. But each autoimmune disease is very different. Each autoimmune disease has very different genetic markers. They have, uh, we develop different antibodies to different things in our own bodies. They're called autoantibodies um, for each uh, autoimmune disease. So whether it's Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, celiac disease, all these antibodies are different, but what they all have in common is that there are very modifiable things. Now, is it true that some people later into the autoimmune disease have a harder time getting these antibodies down? And it's absolutely true. And not only is it true that they have a harder time getting these antibodies down, it's also true that it takes them longer to get these antibodies down, but there's always a place to start. It doesn't matter how old you are, there's always a place to start. 
And if you're suffering from autoimmune disease, if you're suffering from, from these long-standing autoimmune diseases and you're on these medications, these biologic agents, these prednisone and steroids, well, there are ways that we can minimize on those medications by looking at, once again, the food intolerances, autoimmune antibodies, looking at food antibodies, and actually examining your microbiome, looking at how your poop is like. <laughs> because um, looking at your poop, looking at the gut microbiome, the species that exists in the gut, uh, can translate into uh, different patterns of how we can actually treat you, especially on the dietary side, on the supplement side, and on the probiotic side as well. So thank you guys for listening. If you have autoimmune disease, uh, go ahead and comment and share this video. And I would love to hear what you guys say. Thank you very much.